We've um, been very successful with hiring really quality staff over the past few years, and this year was no exception. And it's, it's great because we invite them here. Uh, they get a chance to meet the board members. So we're just going to start with the high school who actually had the most new hires this year, and, and Mr. Vigliotti is going to be taking that role. We have our new member of the math department, <laughs> Mrs. Samantha Sam Chason, who comes to us after spending her first few years teaching at Chapaug Valley and who is very excited to have the opportunity to teach math at the high school level. So we're happy to have her. Uh, second, our new district library media specialist, Mr. Wayne Prescott, my long lost brother, <laughs> <laughs> who brings, <laughs> that's what the students I it's think seem to think. Yes, 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 yes. We're, we're right looking anxiously forward to Twin Day during Spirit Week, so don't <laughs> skip that one. Um, he brings 25 years of education experience to our school community, and he has spent the bulk of his career thus far at Litchfield High School, but most recently in Region 6, where he worked for the past four years as a library media specialist, working with all grade levels. So um, he's going to be doing work not just here at Terryville High School, but throughout the district, um, leading uh, our efforts in our libraries in all our schools. And last but not least is our new technology teacher, Mr. Russ Fuller, who brings a wealth of experience to Terryville High School based on his previous 16 years instructing a number of construction and firefighting classes at Berlin High School, as well as an impressive 46 years as an active firefighter. So uh, we've had a lot of conversations with Russ, a lot of opportunities over the summer as he's gotten in the room and uh, made it his own. Um, and we're really excited to have him, along with Wayne and Sam as well. Um, they're all off to a great start, and we're really looking forward to uh, their future contributions to the community here. So. Great. Well, thank you. And now Miss Suffrage from the middle school is going to introduce all of her new staff. All of mine. All right, so Eli Terry welcomes. This is Becky Lyman. Becky is our special education teacher. She has dedicated the last eight years to working with students with emotional and behavioral needs. Becky spent the last three years at the Grace Webb School, where she serves students in kindergarten through third grade in a self-contained classroom. And uh, she's doing a great job, and I'm very pleased. So, Becky. Excellent. And last but not least, Crystal Collins from Plymouth Center School and all of her staff. <laughs> Good evening. Um, the face that I'm going to present to you may look familiar. This is Sarah Trudeau. Um, Sarah is a resident of our community, and her children actually went through Plymouth Center School and the rest of the Plymouth schools. She worked at the Family Resource Center pre-K program for a number of years, then decided to go back and get certified. So she left us for one year to go to the New Britain schools and we stole her back for our inclusive pre-K program, and we're so glad to have her with us again. So this is Sarah Trudeau. Excellent. Um, so I'm here to present to you on the Smarter Balance Assessment results from last year, which is the 2017-18 school year. The beginning of this presentation is very similar. It has a lot of background information in terms of the assessment itself. So the Smarter Balanced Assessment um, package that we have is both a legal requirement and it's our responsibility. It's legal responsibility and it's an equity responsibility. So what we do within the public education system is try to make sure we have the same yardstick with which we're holding all districts. So why do we do it and what can we do with the information that we gain? We're able to accurately describe student achievement and growth. The growth piece is new for us. They have really accurate ways to measure growth over time. And now that we've had the assessment for the, this is our fourth administration, we're able to compare individual students how they progress through the grades. It's valid, reliable, and fair because it's been vetted by all of the research associations. And it's an annual snapshot of student achievement. It is not a sole measure of student growth. We can't look at one test score and say, this is, you know, my child, my child is a not meeting. 
Um, we really need to put all of those sources together and what we do is we triangulate data at the school level and we look at how they're doing in, on formal and informal measures of assessment and um, this is one key piece. It shows really how they act on, on one event and the culmination of all their skills. One of the things that's so now I'll get into our actual scores from last year. What you could see on this slide, if um, you were able to see the numbers up close, um, this entire presentation will be posted on our website as well. So you can go back through and dive into the data as well. Um, so what you would see is that the state of Connecticut average um, meeting or exceeding, so we call that a level three or four, their percentages in English language arts and math were 55.3 and 40. 6.7% and ours were 52% and 53.6%. So we're right at um, or above the overall percentages for the state. You'll see overall that our reading, uh, our overall reading score um, is within a couple points of where we were last year and our math has grown by several percentages. Um, this chart breaks it down um, year over year, so from 15, 16, 16, 17 to 17, 18, how we did at each of our schools in ELA and math. And although we went down just a point or two overall this year in ELA, you can see it really is sort of focused in, um, in our middle school language arts scores. Um, there's a few reasons why we think that might be happening that I'll share with you as we move forward. But other than that specific area, you can see our math scores year over year in the middle school are growing, and our ELA and our math scores year over year are growing in each of the other two schools as well. One of the things we wanted to emphasize is that last year, um, one of the, we've been bringing the workshop model up through from kindergarten up through fifth grade. Last year, that was only in sixth grade at the middle school, and our middle school class sizes were pretty large in sixth grade, and we had some shift in staff. We were actually required, if you remember, to cut three literacy coaches last year, and one of them was a full-time literacy coach at the middle school, so we're wondering if that could be some of the effects that we're seeing there as well. So this is a slide that Dr. Semmel presented in his budget presentation last year, and we just wanted to bring it up as a reminder that the red bar in the middle is the average per pupil expenditure of all of the towns in our DER, which is our demographic reference group. Um, and so if the state median is right in the middle there, we're the blue bar over to the right. We come in in, in Plymouth spending um, over $2,500 less than the state median per child. So if you multiply that times the number of students in our district, I believe that puts us about $3 million under what the average state school system spends. So um, it's just a reminder, especially as we go forward looking at the other um, towns that we're comparing ourselves to, um, that we are spending much less per pupil than some of these other towns are. And we're still hanging right with them or exceeding them at times with scores. We're still right there in the middle of the pack. One of the things that we're finding is that when we make such great growth on one year, it's a little bit harder to maintain that over time. So we're really trying to figure out where are those key leverage points where we can continue to stick with things that have been working for us so that we can continue to see that growth. Um, one of the things that we really like to do is we like to look at magnet schools because um, some of our students that reside in Plymouth do go out to magnet schools. And so we like to see how we're comparing um, to some of the schools that draw our students. And you can see Plymouth Center um, highly outperforms the other elementary magnet schools that um, draws many of our children. And Fisher also outperforms, or is very close in ELA, um, and outperforms in math the other um, two magnet schools that re recruit many of our children. So what does all of this mean? What are the data highlights? We've had really great continued growth in math. Our ELA dropped just a little bit this year, but we're still holding pretty steady. That grade five cohort in ELA is, is a shining star. And our foundation, the way that we're preparing our students, even though we don't look at kindergarten, first grade, second grade data with this particular assessment, our foundation, what we see is that 
The scores in third grade show us they have a strong foundation coming up through those grades. And we also see that our elementary schools are outperforming other area choice schools. So we like to celebrate our victories, but we also like to think about what can we do better. So what are our next steps in curriculum and instruction? We really want to work on supporting our transitions from 5th to 6th and 7th to 8th and trying to figure out why sometimes it's a little bit more difficult to maintain um, high levels of achievement in those grades. And then we're going to continue to refine our workshop model at the elementary schools and at the middle school now. So now that we're familiar with the curriculum model, how can we continue to really fine tune that and customize it to our students and our needs and our data? Um, speaking of data, we have our new data system, um, EduClimber, and we're really going to be using that carefully to monitor student progress. Having this data system will allow us to manipulate data in ways that we have not been able to. Um, we're able to make a couple clicks and look at an entire grade level and say, how are the females doing compared to the males? How are our high needs doing compared to our non-high needs students? And really start to focus in on individual students to continue the growth forward. And we do need to look at our budget for next year. Um, we have we had some significant cuts last year that we were able to make when forced, but um, I, we are seeing now that um, that could potentially be impacting our performance and the ability to really support kids and support teachers in that growth. So we need to continue to watch how this is developing to see how um, the positions are Yes, the Finance Operations Subcommittee met prior to the board meeting. The subcommittee reviewed the Accounts by Facility Report for the month of August 2018. This report will be forwarded to the Town of Plymouth Board of Finance. Um, and also, uh, upon recommendation from the Finance Operations Subcommittee, we would like to bring forward a motion to the full board to hire two tutors, one at Harry S. Fisher, and one at Plymouth Center School to support the educational needs of teachers and students. Coming from committee, it does not need a second. Yes. So I'm going to do a roll call vote. All right. Josiah? Yes. Cindy? Yes. Karen? Yes. Greg? Yes. Jerry? No. Dick. For reasons I stated. Yes. The eyes have it. There will be two tutors, one added to Plymouth Center School and one at Harry S. Fisher.